So, so far we've found two tier 3 side quests in Usnan. And where is this going? Ah, okay. It's like a little shortcut back. I wonder when that Gregory guy is going to reappear, the one who said if you could find a pickpocket. Ah, Chronosis is over. So there we go. This is our first day of Final Fantasy XIII. I think I will save again here right before the end of this day in case I've missed something that is important that I would have to do at the end of the first day. I've got some notes written, but I'm going to check them uh, at the end of the session because I thought in session one I probably wouldn't need to focus on anything that's that important or missable. Most of it was stuff from later on, I believe. And there's only very few things as well. Like quests that you have to complete at a certain time or something like that. Exactly! No! <laughs> Damn it, oh, the lights have got that. Okay, the first day is over. Welcome back, Light. Now step forward and offer your Aradia so we can give time back to the world. Pray. As the world dies around me, I offer this blessing. Oh man, I thought she was going to the Blitzball sign for victory. <sighs> no! Five days till the end. We don't get ourselves a new day just yet. How much more Aradia do you want me to get? I haven't told get? you everything about Aradia. Come here and I'll tell you what you need to know. Okay. Uh, we've got some new stuff. Red Mage, Liberator, Juno, Sospita. Alright, cool. I'm not sure how much of what you get in that situation is dependent on your performance and how much Aradia you gained, but... Let's have a look. I already have a strength plus 40, so I think I should go... Oh, Okay, the Liberate is a bit powerful. Yeah, I like it. Ah, uh, okay. Right. We'll leave this till we're done. I just want one with each. Red mage is very red. It's annoying that you can't have multiple ones with the same weapons and stuff and just switch them over. I don't see why you can't have it like this and then it gives you this warning when you try to make it one of your main three. That's a bit frustrating, but there you go. So I can't even complete I can't even complete it until then, I think. Maximum ETB plus twenty. B4 ETB plus fifty. Light slash blaster buster ruin. Okay, we'll take a look at these at the next session. I can't bother with that right now. I'm gonna chat to Hope and then I'll wrap up this initial session of Final Fantasy 13 3. This is Yggdrasil, the Tree of Life. Yep. It's a holy tree and its life force is entwined with that of the world. Aradia gives Yggdrasil the power to grow. As the tree grows stronger, so too does the world. With enough Aradia, you can extend its life and push back the Day of Destruction. Up to 13 days, after which God awakens. 
So the more Aradia I can collect, the bigger that tree will grow. And the bigger the tree, the longer the world has before Doomsday. Okay, check the tree's condition. Okay. Talk to Hope about lost time. In this world, all the clocks count to 12, but that wasn't always the case. Back in the old days, all clocks went to 13. Somehow, when the chaos first flooded into the world, we lost that 13th hour. It was one of the great mysteries. No one could figure it out. Odd. But happen, it did. And the results were dramatic. Space-time has been damaged. Where once each day lasted 26 hours, now only lasts 24. Two hours of every day gone, just like that. The lost time. Right, is that how you get the extra day if you do all of this stuff? There are certain areas within Nova Chrysalia that I want you to focus on. Five locations where I'm picking up anomalous chaos readings. And I'm guessing one of those locations is right where Snow is. Yes, exactly. The palace in the city of Yusnan. There is another spot in the heart of Luxarian, the Holy City. One more in the scorching sands of the dead dunes. And finally, I've measured large chaos fluctuations at two locations in the Wildlands. Four regions, five locations. Right. To be more precise, the goals are people, not places. For example, the chaos activity in and around Snow's palace is linked to him, and the darkness in his heart. It's the same kind of chaos that I'm picking up in the other four locations. And you want me to find these five people? They're your priority. Yes. Those people have massive burdens on them. The fate of many rest on their shoulders, and that makes your task all the harder. Helping them will not be easy, even for God's handpicked savior. But I can help you. Okay, so basically, um, these five locations, these five people, they're all looking like they could be blasts in the past, because we've got snow. Uh, we saw a glimpse of Vanille, very, very fleeting, but she was in the church, and she looked like she was... She wasn't being worshipped herself, but I think she had a high rank in the church. And we saw a glimpse of Noel as well, so I think it's looking like that kind of situation. And they're the main people we've got to focus on for the story. There's a hard truth we must face. There are thousands of people down in the world waiting to be saved, but you cannot help all of them. It's not possible. I've only got a handful of days. There just isn't enough time, right? This will sound cold, but you need to be efficient. Saving people who are suffering under the heaviest burdens will give you more Aradia, which is good for us. But the greater the burden, the more you might have to do before that soul can be saved. Sometimes, solving someone's problem might just take too long. You're saying I shouldn't waste time on helping the hard cases. I've got to pick and choose who gets saved. Of course it would be best if you could save everyone, but you can't. It's a numbers game, Light. The more souls you save, the more Aradia you can gather and offer to the tree. The time spent helping one person might be better spent saving the souls of ten others. Efficiency by volume, is that it? A numbers game, like you say, control costs and maximize profits. What is it that they say? Time is money. Yes, sir. The warp device has been unlocked. Okay. So, yeah, when it comes to the side quests, uh, from what I know... You cannot complete all of the side quests and get the Platinum Trophy with your first playthrough. So even if you do everything right, there's certain things that you won't be able to gain access to. Uh, not certain if like saving and reloading saves can change it, but I've definitely read that you need to have more than one playthrough in order to get absolutely everything. So yeah, I'm going to try to, to get everything that I can, uh, everything that I come across. I've got a list of the quests that are around and I'm pretty sure that aside from I think maybe like five or six of them have certain criteria. like you have to return to the quest at a certain time and if you don't then you can't complete the quest you fail it aside from stuff like that in general I should be able to get most of the quests for this game done but I won't be doing like a like I won't be doing a second playthrough once I'm finished to get additional quests I didn't complete and all that kind of thing as long as I can do enough quests to get uh, the 14th day, then I'm good. So now that the whole system has kind of been explained, basically the more Iradia we gain, the more main quests we do, the more side quests we do, the more uh, like flowers are going to be blooming on this tree. 
And if we can do enough, then even though Hope has said that on the 13th day, Boonavelza will awake, if we've done enough, we can actually get a 14th day. And on that 14th day, there's like a, there's like a big dungeon there. And one of the super bosses of this game is in there and that kind of thing. So that is why I'm going to do everything I can to try to get to that 14th day and access that dungeon because it's going to contain uh, some boss battles and it's going to contain like super bosses and things of that nature. So that's going to be the plan guys. This is the first session of Final Fantasy 13 3. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There is a lot more to come. Uh, I'll start this session by mentioning that I did a little bit of research before starting. Uh, I already had some notes written down, but there was something I wanted to check. Uh, basically, the canvas of prayers thing that I looked at last time, uh, I read something that made it seem like you did need those in order to unlock the final day, like they did count towards your side quest total. But it turns out that it doesn't. The canvas of prayers thing is something that I don't need to do, and the only reason why you'd want to do that is obviously other than kind of just the fun of doing the side quests, is to improve slightly the, the stats of Lightning because obviously you get the small stat boost by doing it. But the stat boost from what I've heard are small. It's not comparable to the kind of side quest stuff and uh, the main quest stuff that you'll be doing. So yeah, Canvas of Prayers, that means that's going to really take a back seat. Uh, I may or may not do any of those uh, depending on how it goes because the side quests are going to be enough to unlock uh, the final day. And well, even with that, we're still going to have to do anywhere between like 40 to 60 side quests. So I think that's going to be more than enough and we can probably skip the camps of prayer stuff. So just wanted to, to start off by mentioning that. Okay, so in terms of data log, do we have anything new to, to talk about before we leave? So I remember that Snow showed us that he still had a Lassie brand. Like how is this Lassie shit still happening 500 years later and, and all that business? Who's given him... The brand and what's his focus and all that kind of business so let's go back and have a little recap on the Lassi business the Lassi are humans who have been cursed by the foul sea they are given great powers and magic but they are forced to obey the god's will to achieve their focus or mission if they fail the Lassi will turn into mindless monsters called seif lightning hope and their other friends were were once branded as Lassi, but they managed to bring about an unprecedented miracle and rid themselves of the curse Snow is now the last remaining Lassie in the world. There we go. So, okay, still not much of a thing, but Snow, the rules don't usually apply for him. He can, like, time travel and, and get Lassie brandings and all this kind of shit. The Cactar statue that you can see in one of the plazas in Yusnan is said to be a homage to the foul sea Cactar who made Snow a Lassie once more. It seems that Snow and Cactar had a strange bond between them, far beyond that of any normal foul sea and its thralls. That's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I don't remember reading this data log when I first played. Like when you're doing the movie version, for example, like data logs are something that you just don't really care about. You just play through the story and you're just like kind of recording what you're playing. I thought the Lost Hours was rather interesting. The thing that Hope talked about where like it used to be 26, but after what happened it dropped to 24. So let's have a, a read of this again. The world once counted 13 hours before noon and 13 hours after, making days that lasted 26 hours. But ever since the world was flooded by the chaos, it has now lost these 13th hours, and the days now last only 24 hours. The two hours that disappear from each day, lost beyond the distortion of time and space, are known by many names. Some call the phenomenon the lost hours, others the time given to God. Most clocks in the world have been remade to reflect the 24-hour day. So I think it's the case that over the course of 13 days, uh, if you can grab two hours, I think maybe that's what this Aradio is all about. You grab like the extra hours, the lost hours, and that's how you get the 14th day from the hours that were lost. And we've been talking about the, the Shadow Hunter. This mysterious figure is worshipped by the Etro fanatics who prowl the streets of Luxarian. They view him as a dark hero who will rid them of Benevelza's servant by killing the saviour and bringing about a future they hope for. The Order sees the Shadow Hunter as the leader of the heretics, and is trying to learn his whereabouts, but his description varies wildly depending on who you speak to. Some think of him as a cold-blooded assassin, while others think he is a righteous knight who punishes those who have escaped justice under the law. Then there are others who doubt he is even still alive. Well, of course, because you should have played Final Fantasy 13 and 13 2 before coming into this, you will know. Uh, when you actually saw the camera shot, you could see like the, the stuff around his forearm and, and all that business. Like That's definitely null. One other thing I want to mention is... Um, I think there's something better results with perfect timing. So 
Uh, thank you everybody that's been in the comments so far. Really appreciate it. I mean, we've had a really good start in part one. I read through it uh, yesterday night. And everyone's just really positive and there's a really nice atmosphere and community in there. So I really appreciate you guys. And one thing that took my interest, which I'm pretty certain I didn't notice at all in my first playthrough, was better results with perfect timing. I don't think we get a tutorial on this, so I think it's, uh, it's pretty interesting to see. So here we go. Certain abilities, such as attack and fire, which you can link in a series, or defensive abilities like guard, will be, e will be ever more effective if you unleash them at just the right time. So, targets perfect timing, physical attacks right when the last physical attack strikes, magic attacks when the last spell is unleashed. Guarding, okay. So, we've got the tutorial on guarding, but apparently you can do 20% more damage per hit if you manage to time your attacks perfectly. So, that's pretty interesting and it's weird that we didn't get a tutorial on that. If you perform an action with perfect timing, you will see a glowing aura around lightning. Perfect, perfect timing. Perfect timing is a high level technique that requires quick judgment and lots of patience. So that means that there is a chance I may never get good at this at all during this entire playthrough. And especially like with easy enemies, I'll probably just completely forget about it and just button spam. But I'll do my best to keep this perfect timing in mind because I'm sure with more difficult battles it's going to be uh, like needed. So we'll see. Okay, so I think in terms of data logs, that's all I want to get into. And day two, I think I should start by returning to... Luxarian and trying to find uh, the code that was needed to to get inside the where the heretics are. So we'll see. I don't think Hope has anything to say. Light, do you understand your role now? You must. The more souls. You yeah. Check trees condition. We already know. Replenish items. Ah, uh, okay. I could spend EP for this. I mean, I've got five EP. Why not? I don't think spending one EP is a big deal. Okay. Alright, I'm going to head back into the world, head to Luxarian and see if I can find um, what I'm looking for with this code. See, part of me wants to kind of get a guide out and just know where they are so I don't use up any time. But I think when it comes to the whole like time thing and will I do enough side quests to get the final day, etc. I think I'll probably work backwards in that sense. So if it turns out that, let's say... I haven't done enough side quests, then I'll just like, I'll upload an earlier save, I'll do the side quests necessary, and then we'll pick up the, the series from there. What is going on here? Where am I? What is this? Hey, Savior! What's going on? <laughs> You again. Right. Can you hear me? Are you alright? Where are you? What's the problem? Equipment trouble? I'm out. I'm getting crazy readings. The coordinates make no sense. I can't pinpoint your position. Hope, are you there? No, no, no. Hope can't hear you or see you. You're invisible. Do you know why? Because we're inside you. Spooky, huh? You mean inside my mind? Yeah. It's a safe place that God can't see. You could almost say it's like, oh, I don't know, an unseen realm. All right, if you say so. But that begs the question, what the hell are you doing in here? I have a name. It's Lumina, and I know a lot about you. And in here, we can talk about anything we want. Safe from prying eyes. Prying eyes? You mean hope? Yep. He might not realize it, but everything he learns gets passed straight on to God. What of it? I don't have any secrets to hide. Oh, right. You're the loyal servant, aren't you? You wouldn't dream of betraying him. And don't worry, okay? Even if I know otherwise, well... My lips are sealed. I have no reason to betray him. Right, right. That's very convincing. Keep those feelings hidden and play the loyal little servant. You want to be as cold as a steel in your sword. You do that, and then no one can guess what's inside. 
It's true, God can't see into human hearts. But he can read your face and tone, just like anyone else, and make his own guesses. Like I said, I don't have anything to hide. He's promised to bring Sarah back. I'm not gonna do anything that might cause him to change his mind. Why should I? Are you still in there, Lightning? Why are you afraid? Huh? Come on, think about it. We're inside your mind, don't you get it? If you can't be true to yourself here, where can you? I know you haven't changed, because you can't. <sighs> what the hell are you? We're just particles, particles of dust, dust brushed, brushed from, from the palm, palm of a god. god. That's all we, we ever were. were. Interesting. Also, shout out to the people who agree with me that the Savior outfit is awesome. Finally! I've got a connection again. Like, what just happened? I was talking to Lumina. Lumina? That girl? What does she want? And where is she now? You didn't hear any of that? No. My sensors didn't pick up a thing. Are you sure she was there? Maybe it was just a dream. A dream? Maybe that's what it was. Uh, right. Uh, teleport complete. <laughs> okay. So, I think it's pretty clear that, that Hope is like a, like a manifestation of God. I don't think that's the real Hope and like God's made him a kid again and sent him... I don't think it's anything like that. I think God is just a, a kind of a proxy... Not God. Hope is like a, a proxy for God inside the Ark. That's what I'm thinking. But like how, to what extent should Lumina even be listened to or trusted anyway at all? Because you can tell she's pretty sinister. And is is she real? Like is she a projection from God as well? In order to infiltrate the children of Etra's rights, we need to figure out their code. The four numbers. Right, and if we don't figure it out by tonight, another girl will be sacrificed. I don't want that on my conscience. You have to hurry. And stay alert for the shadow Okay, so I guess whenever I want to kind of discuss things about the story, I'm kind of forced into doing this a bit because I don't want to waste time on the clock. Like, every half an hour probably counts. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Lumina is appearing in ways in which God cannot see her. So, if it's if it really is true that God can't see what's inside the hearts of people, but is this a trick by Bunavelza, for example? Is this some kind of thing to to keep Lightning on her toes, keep her motivated? I don't know. Um, I mean, Etro is dead, but then again, Etro is a god, so maybe Etro is not dead, and this is some kind of move by Etro. I don't know. I mean, it's all a little bit confusing. Like, how Lumina features. Is she really Sarah? I mean, of course, another option is that Lumina slash Sarah is, like, just completely a manifestation of of Lightning's mind. So, it's not some trick by God. Like, she's not been sent there by any being or whatever. It's just Lightning's head playing tricks with her. But in that case, why and how did it happen like that, etc. So, we don't know. But we're going to be finding out more about Lumina slash Sarah as we progress. Uh, mythology and legends and history is still empty for now, so I think we can move on. Now, I didn't leave any markers here last time. Midnight to 6 a.m. Okay, so basically I've got until, until midnight to figure this out. I need to get the code, and I need to trigger off any side quests. So we're probably going to be hanging out in Luxerian for now, and see how we do. We've completed both of these. Lightning is ordained to meet the Diviners again tomorrow at noon. It sounds less like an oracle and more like a command, but either way, if Lightning wants to continue the quest, she can come back at the appointed time. Because it's a three star, I really shouldn't screw this one up, so I've got to be careful. Got to remember that. I wish you could set up like a reminder, like a phone reminder or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. 
Okay, so let's go code hunting for a, a little while. I'm not really sure where to start, but I guess I can talk to people. Is it your first time in the city? If so, listen to this. This is North Station. The use non-bound train is all you'll find here. There's a South Station as well. If you wish to go to the Wildlands or the Dead Dunes, the South Station trains will take you there. It's easy to mix them up. Be careful. The only place you can get to from this North Station is Yusnan. Okay, man. That's... Shit, we already kind of knew, but okay. I'm not sure if we've got enough draw distance to see anything from there, so fine. There were a few people that, like, had question marks around them that looked like you could talk to them, but you couldn't, so... Like, this person here, I think, we couldn't talk to last time. These people. Okay. I feel like even if I want to do all the side quests that I need to to get the 14th day, I should have enough time. I don't need to, like, panic and rush here. So I'm going to try to, to forget about the time in general and not kind of stress myself out by feeling like I've constantly got a battle against it. And like I said, if worse comes to worse and it turns out I haven't done enough quests, then I can always kind of reload a save from day, let's say, 12 or something like that and just do a few more and come back to it. It's not the end of the world. No pun intended. Marketplace. Welcome. Are you looking for rare items from the wildlands? I've got a mighty fine selection. No. See Not yet. Soon. I mean, I might need it for something, but I guess I can always run back. Nice. One thing I will say is Lumen is really well voice acted, I think. Okay, buying weapons and shields. Okay, I don't think we need a tutorial on that. There's a lot of stuff to spend money on, man. Flare pen L. 72,000. So, I was going to say, is this like the next version of this? Liberator. So, yeah, okay. Right, well, obviously we're not spending any money on this shit yet. We'll, well get to that. Thanks a lot. Sorcery shop, sure buy some spells. Blessed be, friend. What can I provide? Okay, this is a bit more important. At sorcery shops, you can strengthen your abilities by synthesizing abilities. Ah, okay. If you synthesize fire level 1 and fire level 1. Ah, okay. Well, that's good to know. There is a limit to how much an ability can be strengthened. Yeah, okay. Defense abilities like guard strength and strength ones like protect and bravery cannot have their parameters raised any further. Okay. Later in your adventure, you will be able to level up abilities, but only those who are maxed out through synthesizing. Okay. That's pretty cool. I mean, we already kind of read it, but... I'm going to skip this one. I get it. Okay. I mean, there isn't anything that I have two of anyway, so I can't synthesize anything yet, I think. Ah, wait, I can. So hold on. Uh... Magic plus 40, 1540 CE, 1540 CE. I mean, is that going to tell me 15th? It looks the same right now. To be honest, I like being able to chain the magic right now, so I'd rather not use up one of my magics, because I like switching between the schemata and continuing to use magic if something's weak to it. So if I only have two that have magic, then it's going to be a bit of a problem for me. So for now, I won't synthesize anything. Um, okay. I'll have a look at the schemata and stuff when it's time to battle again. Right now, we're exploring and looking for codes. So it's not that important right now, I think. He says. He says. But these ones are, are quite easy. So I think we'll be okay. Okay, I think I'm getting some halos around there. I think the whole perfect attack thing is there to kind of 
encouraged not spamming. That's what I've understood. Ah, that was bad timing. I think when it does glutton, that's when you're supposed to attack. So you're seeing some gold rings appearing around it. I think I'm doing the right thing. There we go. So you've got to hit it when it's using the glutton. It's a sexy number. Uh, okay. 